the identity hybrid means there is transition from one identity to the other we are at crossroad of identities the blend of identities okay now this time the same group this module is also based on the same research project we talked about in the last module there is a group of interviewees it is being interviewed by the researcher they are looking at women magazines in their hands this time they would talk about hybrid identity mixed identity so they have read something from the magazine the interviewer asks their response let's see what is their response in the following discourse the talk that i would show you association with two cultures is seen differently people from one culture are associated with an other culture and this association is being seen differently their perception on this association is different first encounter first discourse interaction that you will see here shows perception of racism among british asians the inter vvs both are from asia they are settled in britain in uk so here in this foreign culture they they look themselves being victim of racism okay in second talk second encounter the perception of racism also exists among asians and british british people brits for british people so british people and asians they also have perception of racism and asians themselves who are settled in britain they feel racism among themselves so this was their response after reading something from their magazines now this is a glimpse of asian immigrants and uh, so that you may have some background uh, in your mind to understand uh, the dialogues and the comments on those dialogues the first encounter we have said that it shows that the respondents the interviewees felt a kind of racism between asians J is a woman she says but in Heslington where i live are uh, you know are um these are fillers they are used in spoken language so uh, this is that ours i live uh, uh, most of the people that live there are bengali or pakistani uh, and and for and and a few members of my family who are obviously from afghanistan but uh, because i was different to the pakistanis now look i was different to the pakistanis there in that locality i was bullied a lot and they uh, used to call me gori uh, which means white girl in their language i was uh, this is a short pause i was even though i was from asian kind of culture i was also asian like pakistanis and my family migrated to pakistan they still cause means because we use short forms in spoken language they still because i was different because i was bullied so much and the way i looked was really pale you you know you know the language that i spoke why they were bullying that girl why were they calling her gori because she was speaking like goras like british people and pakistani people were calling her gori and she felt that they uh, because of this language they are bullying her 
and this gave her a perception of racism. Now the second dialogue, here the perception of racism differs a being from different cultures than races. So this time this perception exists among Asians and the local British, Britishers. Okay. Nash. Nash says, uh, one thing I would have liked to have grown up without is racism. Uh, I, I, I dream that I shouldn't have seen racism here. This is what she wants to say. There is past, which I don't think somebody who was born and brought up in Pakistan or India or whatever would you experience in the same way that we have because there's just been a part of our life, hasn't it? But being Pakistani or Indian, we do face racism because this is part of our life, she says. Now another person, Linda, this my son, she is Britisher. She responds to her, this might, uh, this is possible, might, strong possibility. This might sound naive, this is so simple. When you say racism, this is not racism, she rejects it. She says that uh, uh, from which perspective is it some British people who think they are the Brits and you are not. The simple thing is that Britishers may be thinking that you are not a local person and it is nothing beyond that. Nas, yeah, yeah, that we don't belong here. <laughs> she again remains insistent that, okay, we are others. We are not people from here. That's why people look at us differently. They take us different from themselves. Another thing about which the interviewer, the researcher got respon responses of the readers of Women magazine, that was hijab. Now, let's see what they think about hijab. A special type of hybridity, because uh, with this hijab, different cultures have different perceptions. There is also blend of cultures and associations and uh, so are the different views of hijab. The following image presents it as a fashion item. First of all, one perception is that hijab is just a fashion item. Look at it. This girl is not doing hijab just to hide her body or for other uh, purposes uh, as we often in our culture, uh, think about hijab. This is part of her dress, her fashion, her style. The following talks, which I would show you, they have uh, different views about hijab. One view is that hijab is symbol of modesty, hayaka, uh, ye hayaki hai and a model Muslim women should commit to it. This is one view. For some other people, hijab does not relate with modesty or with any religion. They say that it is not practically right. Their opinion is casual. They think about it in an irreligious or secular manner. Okay. How do we know all these things? How do we construct these views of women about women? Hijab is part of women. It is part of femininity. So how femininity is constructed, how people think about hijab? How do we know this from the written language of magazines? You will see from these dialogues. I leave these dialogues 
for your own reflection you must read them and write your own perceptions and uh, after that you should also add your own critical comments whether you agree with these points of view or not okay and in any case you must support your answer with some sound argument right this is a kind of task for you now see this is another image that conveys a, a third dimension to hijab here hijab is taken as a compulsion it is against somebody's choice the person has to wear it because parents or uh, some workplace uh, norms they require it that you must wear hijab burqa etc but see the image is very clear that the purpose is not modesty or anything like that the purpose is to add attraction instead that is uh, that goes against the idea of hijab itself so uh, here hijab is religious binding is uh, given in this dialogue the dialoguers say that uh, religion demands that women should observe satar parda so uh, you will know from this dialogue and see here hijab is also related with muslim identity both types of hijab are being seen here the first is in style of iran and turkey and the uh, first uh, is uh, also common in muslim countries including pakistan and uh, here is another dialogue where hijab is taken just a personal preference so these dialogues they are responses of the interviewees and they are their reaction from the writings given in women magazines and from these dialogues we know what we know how they construct hijab the concept of hijab that is part of feminine identity some take it as casual some take it as fashion some take it as modesty some take it as personal preference uh, we may or may not observe it so finally uh, what i would emphasize uh, as a conclusion to this whole talk that you should know that our discourse at workplace whether it is written or spoken it constructs our gender identity sometimes our gender identity relates with our societal ideology and stereotypes and sometimes it deviates from that and a critical researcher must keep in view both types of results deviation and conformity while reaching some results about gender identity and finally i would remind you of the task again that i have left the dialogues up to you read them think about them and give your own critical comments about these dialogues